Mayor Roland Dykes. Here. Vice Mayor Mike Crawford. Here. Alderman Mike Hansel. Here. Alderman Bobby Knight. Here. Alderwoman Luana Ottinger. Alderman Steve Smith. Here. City Attorney Terry Hurst. Here. City Administrator James Fincham. Here. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting it's in your package. If you've had a chance to look those over, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes as presented. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting of August 10th, 2021. It has been properly seconded. Please signify your approval by the normal sign of aye. 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 Any nays? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, proclamations and our recognition of citizens by the mayor. Really only have two today. We'd like to wish our city administrator and our Alderman Hansel a happy birthday. Thank you, Mayor. I'll approve. <laughs> any, any nays? <laughs> Put down three nays. <laughs> They're coming a lot quicker. Yeah, really. <laughs> Wait to get where I'm at. Uh, I'd like to just take one second here, just, uh, so we won't have to do that twice. Well, recognize all the department heads. All of you's done an excellent job, and I want you to know that you y'all been over backwards to do everything we asked you to do. And I just wanted to tell you, appreciate it. You don't realize it, but appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else like to? There are none. Okay. Next item on the agenda is our communications from the city administrator. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, since our last meeting, we, we have continued to have uh, positives within our ranks. Of the employees also have had some that have been exposed and had to quarantine. One thing that I did do, uh, I think I've made most of you aware, but not everybody, as, as you know, when the uh, federal mandate ran out the first of the year on paying people 80 hours of time to be off if they uh, tested positive or were exposed to COVID, I opted to extend that. Uh, and with the city continuing to, to provide that benefit, although we were no longer reimbursed by the federal government. And so uh, the, the vaccine came out in uh, late winter, early spring. And now what a lot of places are doing uh, in, and doing even more than what we are, some are making, if you don't have, if you're not vaccinated, they're making you pay part of your insurance now. But that's, that's not what, what I'm getting into. But what I did do was that uh, we are at about 40% of our employees, maybe just a little over now, that have been vaccinated. And so, of course, I'm sure everybody has heard the president's uh, declaration that it's his intent that every employer over 100 employees uh, mandate that you either have to have, that their employees either have the vaccination or get uh, tested every week and they're going to try to enforce that under uh, OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which also comes to TOSHA and then down to us. Now the state of Tennessee voted not to do, not to allow that, so they're going to, and they filed a lawsuit against it, so we'll see where that plays out. But anyway, um, what I have done, I put an order out this past month that if you choose not to be vaccinated, and that's everybody's right uh, to choose not to, but that the city is not going to give you uh, time off for it. Uh, if that's a choice you make to, to not be vaccinated, then if you have to miss, you're going to have to take sick time or vacation time or comp time, something of your personal time to be out, just like you do if it's some other illness. Uh, and if you have had the vaccination and something happens, we'll continue to, to take care of you. But if you choose to put yourself in harm's way, then the city taxpayer shouldn't be liable for supporting you on that. And so I did put that order in place this month. And uh, unless you all have a problem with that, I'm going to continue to do that. I agree with you. Thank you. Uh, on our... our um, Stimulus money, uh, it, 
this is one of the most convoluted things I've ever dealt with. Um, the state of Tennessee just keeps putting more requirements onto it. Now you have to, uh, they, they ask that you go through 10 weeks of training, which Tina has started, and before you do anything with it. Now it come to light today that the county has drawn down some of their money and they couldn't have done the 10 weeks of training because it's only been going, this is only the second week of it. So I know they've not done the 10 weeks of training that was supposed to be required before you drew down any money. So I don't know, we're gonna to have to dig into that, how they managed to pull that off uh, without meeting the requirements. But it seems that what the state is doing, uh, to me, this is pure speculation, but the way it reads in, in some of the documentation they have sent out is there's, there is an option, one thing, there's an option on there to where that the city could say, we don't wanna fool with it, we're signing away our rights to it and the state gets to keep it. And it, the the federal the feds uh, the people the cities of a fifty thousand or more get their money directly from the federal government. They don't have to go through the state of Tennessee, and they've already gotten their money. And so the the state of Tennessee is making it harder on cities that that get it from the state than the feds are. And I can't help but think that they're trying to make because some cities have already signed away their rights to it because of aggravation. And I, it seems to me like it's possible that they're wanting you to get tired and fed up so they get to keep it and spend it the way they see fit. I'd hate to think that, but I don't know how else to look at it with the way that they just keep adding more and more requirements onto it that are really uh, you know, heavy handed in what you have to go through to, to draw down the money or get a project approved. And so, uh, we're going to try to find more out about how the county managed to pull money down when we were told that the state wasn't allowing any money out yet. So we got to get to the bottom of how, how that happened, if, if, if indeed it has happened. And so, uh, you know, we've got projects, what few projects that can be done about it. You know, we went, we hurriedly, when they first announced the money and told us what we could do with it, we, we tried to get things in line that we could do with it, what limited number there were. And now it's hurry up and wait. And some of the things it talks about as far as it, uh, uh, that it's recommended it be in next year's budget, that'd be July 1 of next year. So, um, uh, you know, I don't know why they were pushing you to get all this, get, get your plans in place if they're just going to turn around and make you wait a year to get it. I don't, a lot of it just does not make sense. The so. systems are going through the same thing. Same thing. They told them one thing, doing something else, but they're having a hard time with it. They, well, they've just constantly done that. The state has constantly changed their story on it and changed the rules and the guidelines and what you can or can't do or how you're going to have to go about to try to get the money. Uh, I, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the worst organized things I've ever dealt with. But I'll, tr I'll try to keep you all updated uh, each month it, it, as far as how it's going. Um, one thing that I brought up last month uh, about the uh, travel expense uh, had been my plan to have something on the agenda tonight uh, to revamp the, the, the city policy on travel. And we've, do we've done a lot of research on it but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to do a little bit more before I have something to bring before y'all. I want the, 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 uh, the auditor is supposed to be here in October and uh, I want to have a meeting. I've talked to the auditor about it once before, but I just got to make sure that the auditor and, and us and you all are all on the same page. And uh, I'll see. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of travel going on in the next month or so anyway. But um, when I did go back and look at the numbers, they have went up a little bit since 2008. I would have thought they've gone up more. But uh, it's went up like 6 or $7 per day since 2008. So I was really surprised at, the, at how little it had actually went up in that amount of time. I would have thought inflation would have taken it much higher. but. But I, I'm going to continue to work on that till I got something that I'm satisfied with that I feel like you all will be satisfied with. The rhythm on the river, 
uh, concert that was scheduled for this month. Uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, asked that that be postponed, uh, both because of the Delta surge in COVID and also because they have the street festival to get ready for. And so right now they have moved that to October the 23rd. And so you all approved it, but you approved it for September. And so uh, they have asked that uh, that we move that to the 23rd. And uh, I don't know if that would require any kind of a, I don't have it on the agenda. I just had it on here to inform everybody. Terry, would that, is that okay. suffice? Since we approved it, I think today would be. Okay. All right. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, James. Okay. Appointment of boards, commissions, and committees. We have none. Uh, reports from committees, members of council, and other officers. Uh, Tanner Preservation Alliance. That's your report, man. Uh, item B is worth e work ethic diploma program report by Love Henderson. Yeah, Miss Henderson contacted uh, Regina and told her she wouldn't be here, be able to be here tonight. Uh, that, uh, that there was actually no need for her to address the council, but that she would be dropping off a packet of information to be uh, shared with y'all. She has not done that yet, but when she does, we will see to it that y'all get a copy of it. Okay. All right, if item eight is old business or unfinished business, item A is consideration of second reading of ordinance number 2021-07, amending the city of Newport Municipal Code, Title IX, business, peddlers, solicitors, etc., adding chapter 10, yard sale, guard, garage sales. Mayor, that was an excellent job of reading the text into the record. Uh, we need a motion, a second, and a roll call vote. Okay. I, I get, he, he does that to me quite a bit. <laughs> but anyway, um, all right, you've heard, you heard the, uh, uh, the consideration of second reading of ordinance number 2021-07. What is the board's pleasure? I'll make a motion to the second reading. Second. All right, we have a motion on the board then to second. It's been properly seconded. We will need a roll call vote, please. Alderman Mike Hansel? Yes. Alderman Bobby Knight? Yes. Alderman Steve Smith? Yes. Vice Mayor Mike Crawford? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, uh, just uh, for information, we have already, uh, Code Enforcement Officer Grant Webb has already been notifying uh, uh, these kind of semi-permanent yard sales that go on. He's already been stopping by and informing them of the impending change uh, in the, the ordinance so that they won't get blindsided by it. When, and uh, they seem to have been already starting to clean up. So. I, I've noticed that on the uh, wood line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> that, that, some so. of it's going out, though, Steve. It's part of it being clean, part of it coming back. Okay. Well, it's official now, so. Yes, sir. Um, item 9 is new business. Item A is consideration of resolution number 2021-05 driver safety matching grant program. Uh, Mayor, this is a, a, the second of two grants that we apply for annually through the public entity partners, formerly TML, um, where that they are our provider. And uh, for our liability and workers' comp insurance, uh, these are grants that they provide to help uh, with the city to try to improve their uh, our, our, our record uh, with uh, damages or injuries and so forth. And so this is a matching grant uh, like the other one we passed last month uh, that, uh, that we apply for each year. Okay. Board's, what is the board's pressure, please? Motion to approve resolution 2021-05. Okay. All right, we have a motion to approve consideration of resolution number 20. 21-05 driver safety matching grant program has been properly seconded. We need a roll call, please. 
Alderman Mike Hansel? Yes. Alderman Bobby Knight? Yes. Alderman Steve Smith? Yes. Vice Mayor Mike Crawford? Yes. Thank you, Tina. Item B is discussion of the charter change for the fire department by Alderman Mike Hansel. Uh, yes, gentlemen, uh, we've had this discussion a couple of times over the years, and this is actually a continuation of that same art or same uh, statement I made back in early in the summer about uh, taking the uh, hirings from the fire department off of us and uh, put it uh, with the uh, city administrator and chief of police, or I'm sorry, the fire chief. So I'm not really looking for a decision tonight on what to do, but I would like a decision on how we should proceed with it. And on uh, Terry Hurst's advice, we needed to start this process because it does involve a charter change. So we, uh, just in getting everything in line right now, ready to do that. Uh, there's some things uh, I'd like to see changed within it, uh, make it a little more like the police department's maybe civil service board. Uh, we can get input too from the uh, fire civil service board and the fire department so that they don't think anything underhanded or uh, uh, some, port, some type of a coup is about to be staged or something. But, uh, that's, that's basically what this is. Okay. The, uh, in, in Alderman Hansel and I's conversation and, and City Attorney Hurst also as well about this issue, when the police department's uh, charter was modified, uh, and that's been 20 years ago uh, when it was done, the, uh, the City Council sent the matter to the Civil Service Board and told the Civil Service Board the changes that they were interested in in implementing in the charter. The, the Civil Service Board uh, put together uh, the changes that, uh, to be made. They voted on it and sent it back to City Council and City Council voted on it and sent it to Nashville. So um, I would assume that this one would need to be follow the same procedure that that one did. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know that it has to be done that way. I don't know that it's in writing anywhere that it has to be done that way. But, uh, but that's how the police department change was made, was in conjunction with and primarily through the Civil Service Board. Jeremy, you on board with this? Yeah, and, and like I said, Civil Service will still be a part of the, the process and stuff. It will just be... It, people don't, may not have to be embarrassed or put in situations too that's in a public meeting for, for situations that that may have to be terminated or something like that. So It, it, it allows what, what uh, Mr. Hansel's wanting to do uh, primarily is make it to where that uh, personnel matters don't have to come in here in front of the board and be a, be a public spectacle that it could be handled through uh, HR and myself as opposed to having to come in here and and be a part of a public meeting and, a, and could be handled more, not trying to hide anything, it's just not wanting to embarrass people, just outright embarrass people. And it's already it's been, been ha handled that way in the police department, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. I think it's pretty much the way it's handled citywide, department wide. Yes, sir. The fire department is the only department that that is current that is that's the case. Yeah. Uh, that everything has to come in front of you all, and we're probably going to have one for you shortly. I think the hiring and firing decisions should be yours. Uh, there's a couple of other things in there that, that Mr. Hurst and I talked about that possibly want to be looked at that's kind of outdated as far as um, pay scales and so forth that uh, that are mentioned that might want to be removed were removed from the police version uh, and might want to be looked at being removed out of this one that'd be y'all's pleasure but uh, that's something that was done in the in the police version and mr hurst pointed i'd forgotten about it to mr hurst pointed out to me that that might be something that we needed to think about and I agree with him okay we're this is an item that doesn't require no, a motion or, or a vote so well, does we anyone else have any? ask you what we want done well you need to yeah y'all need to be able to decide what you want to recommend to the Civil Service Board but that does not have to be voted on it has to be voted on when it comes back 
So it don't have to be voted on to go, but it would have to be voted on when it comes back to here to be approved to be sent to Nashville. Then it would have to be voted on here. Okay. Just from uh, a practical standpoint, it might be a good idea, Mayor, for uh, Alderman Hansel and our two or three other council members to meet with the Civil Service Board to come up with something that everybody can agree on and bring it back to the council next month because we do need to move on it uh, before the first of the year if we're going to change the charter. It has to go through the legislature. Uh, the governor has to approve it. Well, like I said, this is something we've been discussing back in the mind Bobby the coach's first term. We right. need to get something done. We've talked about it long enough. I think we need to do something. Yeah, they do. <laughs> when does the so, civil service board meet? A week from tonight, next Tuesday. So we go to the point of committee. A week from tonight, the civil service board meets. Uh, well, I would think that uh, Alderman Hansel would probably lead that committee. Uh, would you be available to meet with them? Uh, I'll have to check my schedule to see, but if not, I'll, I'll work something out. Okay. And you say, what, you say three? Whatever. Two, yeah, three? I'll be glad to. Okay, appreciate it. Okay. We're all for it, I reckon. I mean, I... Oh, yeah, we're all for it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. To, to meet with all, meet with the Civil Service Board uh, next... Tuesday. Next Tuesday. We normally meet around four, but we might get if it we can adjust the time. Okay, I'll, I'll call you tomorrow. Okay, all right. I mean, they, they, we'll see with them. But there's there's three members and, and their secretary, so we might be able to move it around if, if we need to. I appreciate that. Uh, Any other alderman would like to be involved in that meeting? Or I know Steve has volunteered, Alderman Hansel, anyone else? That ought to be enough if all of us already agreed on it. Okay. I don't know why we had need to meet a whole bunch of times on it. Okay. All right. You got then it's agreed then that Alderman Hansel and Alderman Smith will meet with the Civil Service Board next Tuesday and they will bring back recommendations to the full board. Yes. Uh, what I was going to ask, Terry, last time did MTAS draw up the final draft of that? They, they do. Yeah, that's what I thought. They draw up the official language. Much better than I can do. Yeah, that's what I thought. They're really good at working with us when we come to them and tell them what we've got. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to item C. It's consideration of sale of city of Newport property, 119 North Woodlawn. Do you want to start? Me? Yeah, do you want to start? <laughs> um, Tell them where we're at. Because, I mean, the letter was addressed to you technically. So. No, okay. Well, um, as y'all know, we've been looking at these, at the property down on we, uh, Woodlawn that uh, we, we got an offer on a couple of months ago. And then when we got that offer, we had a counter offer to come in unofficially. And we didn't have it in writing last month. And we asked that that be put off till we could uh, give them an opportunity to put an official offer in writing. Uh, you now have that offer in front of you up there. Um, and a representative is here tonight, uh, the, the, the primary person uh, involved in that. And so um, the original offer from the one individual is for one property downtown. The, the counter offer from uh, this gentleman is for both properties downtown. Now, the one property that uh, that he is interested in is where currently the dog pound is, the animal control building. And uh, in, his, in the letter there that has been provided to y'all, uh, it stated that uh, the, the properties will be maintained and that we will be allowed to uh, continue our animal control operations there as long as necessary which it's our goal to be out of there in a few years as soon as we can uh, get some other arrangements worked out we've got a plan in place for, for how we're going to handle that and so um, he says we can stay there uh, for a dollar but uh, 
to uh, to continue operating out of that until our other o uh, operation is viable, and so uh, that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. Now the the original offer that came in on the one property that uh, when that gentleman found out that th it had been postponed, he verbally told the receptionist that he would increase his offer, but he never provided that in writing. So I, I can't, I mean, I, I don't have anything other than her saying he told her that. So the only offer we officially have is what, what you have. Uh, there was no, no increase came in. And so, but he, he was only interested in the one property. Uh, this buyer is interested in both properties but will allow us to stay in the one and continue to operate out of it as long as we need to. 219 East Main is the address of the animal control building for the record. 119 Woodlawn. Right, you, you, the board, you have the package in your, uh, before you. What, what are you, what's the board's pleasure? Uh, was there some mention last month that uh, they would pick up the cost of the, the, cover, the roof? Uh, that was mentioned uh, when we when we spoke on the phone. That came up, and it is it does state in the letter that maintenance would be uh, provided for both buildings. I'm assuming that includes that that roof. Uh, the, we the animal control building needs a roof right now, bad. And uh, we're gonna, you know, if, if uh, regardless of whether this sale goes through or not, uh, there's gonna have to be a roof put on it pretty, pretty quick, uh, in short order. And so, if this sale is made to uh, to this individual, then that will uh, uh, a roof to go on that building will probably be in the neighborhood of thirty-five thousand uh, dollars to put a roof on it. And so. Um, and that's going, that's judging by what it costs us to put a roof on station two at the fire department, which has a similar uh, square footage as that. And so. Um, which is $35,000 not coming out of taxpayer uh, money. Correct. And so that's, you know, uh, I mean, that's. I think that's a, a I think that's a very good offer to uh, allow it to put a roof on it and allow us to stay there as long as we need. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good offer. I think it's a good offer too. If you want, to, uh, hang, Steve. But uh, no, no. I would just say I would recommend making the motion to sell contingent on the contract of sale has language that the roof is to be repaired on that building within 30 days of closing. Does that sound? I was about to say verbal is good, but written is better. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think since you've given, the council gave the city administrator the ability to negotiate with potential buyers for those properties, that that would still stand, right, Terry? So he could negotiate the contract uh, as long as it was met what the recommendation Absolutely. is. I, 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 but having said that, I still think that the council ought to give them the authority to go ahead and sell it to, to the, this buyer. And that will sadly end, what was it, Vision 2020? I don't know. I still got the list. Oh yeah, okay. And I understand Mr. McCarter, your uh, client will agree to that, those stipulations you mentioned. Appreciate your time to straighten down down Newport up there. Like it looks better. The work that's been done already down there looks better. Uh, we need something down there. Uh, how soon would uh, how soon would we start seeing some type of change? Down there? Yeah. Immediately. Right now, uh, with architects, so we'll see. Okay. And some work already been done down there also. Uh, as far as plans go, it's kind of what's curious enough. Yeah. 
And, and to expand on what Gary said, uh, I would also recommend that there be a time limit put on the other property as far as to that a, a minimum time frame on when some type of renovation would have to begin on it. Uh, and that's been typical. Been for years, yeah. nobody's done nothing with it. Right. And that's just to protect the, the, the town. Just to give what is the reasonable amount of time? The city, city hall used to be down there where those buildings are now. I, would, I think a, something reasonable and typical would be within once the city, I would say what we could go with, once the city leaves the um, one, uh, 219 East Main within 365 days of exiting the building, the uh, rehabilitation work begins beyond the roof. And then if you, that seems reasonable. And then, because um, I think the idea is to do one large retail commercial mixed use development project and they would need that building to so it kind of puts us on a timeline too to oh, move forward with our project but which is a good i mean that is a good thing too but you're saying 365 days from the from one, yes once we once we're out of the animal control building but how soon would we do the roof if i mean we can't oh, the, yeah the roof would be within 30 days of closing days. Okay. yeah because that's, that's we need that sooner rather than later yes, yes sir okay that's what, yeah, we could go 365 days. No, it's going to have to be fixed because it's leaking bad. And we've patched it as far as we can patch it. So, Calderman Smith, you had begun to make a motion. Yeah. It, it, can you remember what it was? <laughs> <laughs> Not Carter, but we uh, <laughs> It needs to include uh, giving uh, our city administrator <clears throat> the authority to continue to negotiate and then you've heard the rest of it. Yeah, and with 30 days on the roof and 365 days to fix the second building, so I make that motion if that makes any sense. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the board that's been properly seconded. This will roll call, please. Alderman Mike Hansel? Yes. Alderman Bobby Knight? Yes. Alderman Steve Smith? Yes. Vice Mayor Mike Prophet? Yes. I'm so glad to see improvements going down there. Motion carries. Congratulations. Uh, our next item on the agenda is bids, purchases, and expenses, of which we have none. Uh, comments from citizens. I'd like to ask uh, Lucas Graham if he would. Do you mind give us a little update on some things? You and I have talked a little bit, but just a little bit of stuff, improvements going on, what's going on. Yours. What's Con situation? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want to bring that up, but um. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's okay. Um, I can give an update. Um, so, uh, as most of you are aware, uh, Con Agra will uh, you've got the war notice and all that coming up. Uh, operations will cease in October uh, of this year, so not too far from now. Uh, production will stop, uh, and they will start. It will keep some staff on on uh, uh, the payroll to help dismantle equipment and get it packed and shipped at the Broadway campus. Uh, there's still inventory at the distribution center and that will remain until up to uh, February 1st of 2022. Um, uh, since then, the property has been uh, purchased or ConAgra has sold that property to a real estate investment company called Phoenix Investors of Milwaukee. Um, they're actively looking for tenants and, and um, I think what coaches were alluding to that I'll share with everyone here is that uh, we are in um, we're actually at final two as of today uh, for state-led project, Project Gold Star. Um, and Project Gold Star it would be a significant job count improvement if, if we can land that deal. Um, we're in negotiations with them and I was on the phone with their CEO before walking into the meeting this afternoon. So um, that's going well. Uh, they're, they filled out their state applications for the incentives, et cetera. So we're negotiating with them. Um, it's not a done deal until it's signed, but uh, just to make everybody aware. Y'all are making an effort to get something back in that building and try to help. Absolutely. Alleviate yeah, a lot yeah, of these yeah. problems. 
Because a lot of people in Con Agra are concerned about this, which I understand why they would be. But uh, Project Gold Star's job count commitment uh, based on our state incentives within five years is 500. Tell about August 8th. It's a wedding day, right? Oh, yeah. Um, wait, August 8th? Say August and October. October. Okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Tennessee yeah. picnic. Yeah. So, Tennessee picnic. Yeah. Yeah. Night, yeah. Um, so uh, the Newport bypass finally made the bid sheet for TDOT <laughs> after many years, um, and and no smart account to me and Gary whining and complaining for the last five <laughs> at, at every RPO meeting. Um, but it's finally on there, um, and that looks very positive. Um, spoken to several of the, the groups looking at that, and uh, so uh, very optimistic. We'll we'll get that that bid let out and get that project started here uh, later this fall and going into the winter. A lot of things looking up for our city and county. They are. Appreciate the job you do. Yeah, well, thank y'all. Is that, is that what you want me to talk about? Or yes, or no, that's exactly what you want to talk about, but tell them how the uh, internal beverage is. I know that's not. Oh yeah, yeah. Eternal Beverage is is um, if you're not driving up there, I encourage you to do so. Uh, you can drive up the gravel lot and take a look if you want. Um, but uh, their building is just about done. They started um, um, uh, let, putting down concrete for their driveways and uh, parking lot now. Um, they're going to continue construction on for the next couple months. Uh, they're hoping their equipment will be here second or third week of all, or I'm sorry. Now Gary's got me going here. Uh, of, uh, of October, um, and hopefully we'll start hiring our first round of folks um, uh, the first of November. So. Wasn't there another plant supposed to come in here too? Or can you let them say anything? Uh, well, okay, I, good enough. It, it, well, the, the, I, it's a it's a coded project, so I can talk about that. It's on my staff report, um, but uh, we are. Um, a final three contender right now for Project Prescott as well. That's another big project. Uh, that'll be a new build project if we get it. And um, I cannot remember what the last uh, what I code that project, but um, uh, it's another high job count, new build. Uh, we're in final two, or yeah, final two uh, with uh, I can't believe it. I think I called it Project. Um, like it's a pro project mod is what I call it. Yeah, that is, is what we call that one. Um, but uh, they are a, a construction manufa uh, manufacturer. Um, another high job count that'd be 400. I think they have 450 jobs on their on their uh, five-year forecast. That's about a thing brightening up for us yeah. here. Um, we have a lot of movement right now, and those are definitely consuming consuming the day. So uh, not all doom and gloom. We've got we've got good things on the horizon, I believe. Might as well mention Love's Travel Center while you're there. Yeah, well, well the Love's is coming along. If you're not drove out there, uh, do that. Um, they've got their canopies up. Um, just for everyone's reminder, they're going to have um, over 75 people on their staff at full capacity as well. Um, and they'll have multiple shifts in place. And uh, some of those positions pay surprisingly well, um, especially for their supervisor positions. Um, and there's about 20 or 30 of those. So a lot of this information you're giving out is making people from Conagra getting laid off. It's been worried to death. It's sort of giving them a little bit of hope and stuff. Good paying jobs coming in maybe to help. Them yeah. With their problem. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, we have uh, we still have very strong interest in the remaining sites at the uh, innovation park as well. Uh, you got you got two, uh, actually Prescott and. Uh, mod are looking at sites there, but in addition to those, there are uh, three more uh, that have are working on offers right now uh, to to look at the at the site. So um, it's good good interest right now, and everyone should feel good about that going forward. Uh, it's it's an interesting time to say the least with building materials and labor shortages, etc. Right now. Um, Anybody in the construction industry will tell you right now it's 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 a it's an interesting time to say the least. A, a lot of lead time uh, materials are short, but anyway, we're we're all moving in the right direction, and the interest is is higher than it's ever been right now. Appreciate the job you and Gary's done. Keep it up. Thank you, Coach. All right. Okay. Any other comments from citizens? We should be heard. 
Hearing none, next item on the agenda is a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. You'll get a second. A second. <laughs> <laughs> we are adjourned.